in fighting the politicization of capital allocation and the politicization of retirement savings. Mr. Speaker, today, House Republicans stand on the side of retail investors. We stand up for millions of Americans around the country who are increasingly asking themselves this simple question, when will I be able to retire? This Congressional Review Act measure that I am offering is a bipartisan, bicameral joint resolution disapproving of a Department of Labor rulemaking that will politicize Americans' retirement accounts and jeopardize their retirement security. This measure simply states that retirement plan sponsors be required to prioritize maximum financial returns for investors ahead of non-pecuniary factors like environmental, social, and governance uh, standards, a political agenda. We do so in a moment where one in five Americans have saved nothing for their retirement, including one in three baby boomers, the generation closest to retirement. We do so in a moment when 78 percent of Americans are either extremely or somewhat concerned about affording a comfortable retirement. And we do so in a moment where the gap between the amount of money that Americans have saved for retirement and the amount that they will need for retirement is $3.8 trillion. That's why, Mr. Speaker, Congress must act to block the Biden administration's recent rule that greenlights so-called ESG investing in millions of Amer Americans' retirement plans, plowing them into less diversified, higher fees, and lower performing portfolios at precisely the time that we need to maximize financial security for Americans approaching retirement. So let's consider the facts. According to a recent Wall Street Journal report, ESG funds carry 43 percent higher fees than non-ESG funds. That's what they want. They want Americans to be forced into higher fee funds. A recent study from NYU and the University of Southern California found that over the past five years, global ESG funds have underperformed the broader market by 250 basis points per year, an average of 2.6 percent lower return than non-ESG funds. And this stands to reason, because ESG funds are by I design less diversified. Greetings, friends. I have breaking news to share with you this Sunday. You may be eligible to receive some extra cash over the next few months. Officials have confirmed that hundreds of thousands of Americans currently qualify for new relief programs and credits. But friends, this money will not be sent out automatically. Today, I will be sharing with you everything that you need to know, so please make sure that you watch until the end of this video. Also, I will be announcing two winners this coming Friday for the Walmart gift card giveaway. If you'd like to enter the weekly giveaways, friends, do click and like several of my videos, and then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. My friends, the more videos that you comment on, the greater your chances of winning the giveaways. A tax credit is among the several benefits you can claim when preparing your tax return. Unlike a deduction, which decreases the income of which you'll be taxed, a tax credit reduces your overall tax due. The result can mean hundreds of dollars knocked off your bill or added to your tax refund. Andrew King, Vice President of Tax Policy and Research at Goldman Sachs has stated, with a credit, you get a 100% benefit. It's a full recoupment of taxes you'd otherwise have to pay. Some tax credits apply to a huge swath of the population, while others are specialized to incentivize specific economic activity. But before you file your return, here are some tax credits you may want to review. The Earned Income Tax Credit is one of the most common income tax breaks. It has been designed to help lighten the burden for middle and lower income families. The Internal Revenue Service has said that for the 2021 tax year, four out of five filers claimed a tax credit with an average benefit upward of $2,000. The total value of those credits was approximately $64 billion. What's even better, the Earned Income Tax Credit is what is known 
as a refundable tax credit. That means if the credit amount is higher than the taxes that you owe, the government will pay you the difference. As its name suggests, eligibility for the earned income tax credit mostly depends on your income, and you have to have worked to receive this credit. For the 2022 tax year, the income limits range from $16,480. To $59,187, depending on your filing status. So there are a few other requirements, including you cannot have more than $10,300 in investment income. Also, everyone on your tax return has to have a valid Social Security number. With tax season already underway, Mayor Eric Adams. Is seeking to get the word out to low-income New Yorkers. The credit gives a tax break to low-income working New Yorkers, families of four earning less than eighty thousand dollars a year, and single tax filers earning less than fifty-five thousand dollars annually, are eligible for the credit. If you have used a child tax credit in the past, it is important to remember that this benefit for families with children. Has undergone some significant changes during the crisis. The government temporarily increased the credit amount, providing thousands of dollars worth of additional relief to millions of American families. But in 2022, the credit reverted to its previous levels. Taxpayers who saw big refund last year, thanks to the credit, may be very disappointed when they filed this time around. Still, the child tax credit can cut a considerable chunk out of your tax bill. The benefit can reach two thousand dollars per qualifying child, and up to fifteen hundred dollars of that is refundable. People with dependents who don't qualify for the full credit can be eligible for a credit of up to five hundred dollars. Families with children under the age of seventeen are generally eligible. For the child tax credit, as long as their kids have valid Social Security numbers. However, the amount you claim depends on your income. The credit begins to phase out once your adjusted gross income exceeds two hundred thousand dollars, or four hundred thousand dollars a year for those married filing jointly. At a certain income level, the benefit lapses entirely. So, dear friends, have you filed your tax returns? Please let me know in the comment section below. The American Opportunity Credit and Lifetime Learning Credit are also two education-focused tax breaks that help people with expenses such as tuition. Both credits have a similar setup, but they are tailored towards different types of costs. The American Opportunity Credit is targeted towards students. Pursuing formal degree programs, the lifetime learning credit, on the other hand, can be used for other types of training and education. With the non-refundable lifetime learning credit, you can claim a total of two thousand dollars per tax return for tuition only, regardless of how many students would be eligible. You cannot claim both credits for one student. The credits do have basic eligibility requirements in common. Both share an income limit of ninety thousand dollars a year for single filers, and one hundred and eighty thousand dollars annually for married people who file jointly. So, friends, if you qualify for any of these credits, please make sure that they're listed on your tax return. Well, my amazing and most dearest friends. That is the end of my daily stimulus update video for this Sunday morning. Thank you, my friends, for being part of this community, and for joining me here every single day. My friends, I will be announcing two winners this coming Friday for the Walmart gift card giveaway. And if you'd like to enter the giveaway, all you have to do is click and like several of my videos, and then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. The more videos that you watch and then comment on, the greater your chances, friends, of winning the giveaways. Thank you, and have a wonderful and very blessed weekend.